Alrighty, welcome to a part two of the uh, T96 transmission uh, disassembly video. Uh, this is going to be a rebuild video as well. Um, I'd just like to show you before anything else uh, the cars um, that use this transmission. This is straight from the overdrive manual. There it is, the overdrive. Warner Automotive Parts Division. So Borg Warner is the name of the uh, company that made the transmission. So that's another thing to mention. When you buy a car, uh, it's not the actual you know manufacturer that makes all the parts of the cars. It's usually you know lots of different manufacturers involved. Uh, at least you know nowadays. Back then it was. Uh, to some extent that was true but uh, you know, uh, mainly maybe just uh, uh, two or th three parts that were made by a different manufacturer not a lot you know for example like uh, AC Delco made the uh, alternators uh, distributors um, and, you know the electrical stuff uh, the company would make the uh, engine so AMC made their own engine and the transmission was made yet by another company so maybe three companies or something like that whereas today there's lots of different companies but I uh, just take a look here and um, just take a look at the list of all the cars that use the same transmission Ford, Fraser, Hudson, K Kaiser, Kaiser, whatever Lincoln, Mercury, Nash, Packard, Studebaker and Willys which is uh, Jeep uh, they didn't mention the uh, Rambler American here, but uh, it used it as well. So, you know, just all those manufacturers and so many different cars through so many years, you know, using the same parts, that's just, you know, you just think of all the interchanging you could do. Whereas now, you know, each car you can only has parts that only fit that exact car for that year and that model. Whereas back then, you know, one part could fit, you know, various different manufacturers, various different years, larger extent, and various models, right? So, at one point, you know, there's probably, that this transmission would probably fit in, um, you know, without exaggeration, you know, 50 cars or so, or even more, right? Whereas, you know, compared to nowadays, it's just one part for one car. Even the same manufacturer will make different parts just to fuck you up. But anyways, moving on. Um, as you can see now, you can actually see the color. All of the original color is still there. It's unbelievable how well these things are built. All the bolts, you know, they came off by hand. Uh, I, ha I didn't struggle to get anything removed. Um, there's the other part that came off. Well, just to walk you through through uh, what I had to do to remove it. Um, I'll just show you here before I go any further. Look how shiny that is. Well, yeah, I know there's still a lot of some dirt inside, but look, you can see the original paint. That's not rust, guys. That's paint. They used to paint these things inside as well. It's just unbelievable, all the machine surfaces, they're all, you know, there's no pitting at all. Even the bearings are still good, you know, and you probably wouldn't be able to tell that from, you know, the amount of dirt and junk that was on this transmission in the first video. But it's all pretty much cleaned up now. I still, you know, still got a ways to go, but everything is in great shape. Okay, so, oh yeah, here's the, uh, it's a big part. Look at that. Look at that. Now, if it was a modern car, it would have been, you know, a couple days outside in the rain. Everything would be rusted and pitted and, you know, falling apart, crumbling. Look at those gears. Fuck, they're just like new, brand new. Everything's turning smoothly. Threads are great. Look, look at that. And, you know, this is only like the, the, the second stage of cleaning. You know, this still got to be cleaned properly, but just look at that already. Here, there's still a lot of junk there. 
but everything's in good shape. And it'll become even more apparent once I do the final cleaning. For now, everything's just you know soaking in diesel, and just to remove all the junk and whatever surface rust there is. But uh, okay, so I think now, look, even the spring is intact. You know, and this thing is, has been sitting, you know, with that amount of rust for you know how many, how many years, perhaps even decades. And, you know, it's like intact. I know there's still a lot of dirt, but. You know, it's just a matter of cleaning. It's not pitted or anything. There's no pitting at all. Bearings, ball bearings, everything is in great shape. Fuck, the little snap rings. Everything, everything, everything. Paint still inside. Like that red part there, it's paint. These guys, you know, they used to be so careful and have such a good intention of, you know, preserving, of making a part, a transmission that would last they would even paint it inside. This thing is heavy, by the way. Okay. The, the bolts are all good. Came off by hand. Okay, now I'll rock you through the steps. Uh, first thing I had to do was um, I removed the bolts here that hold the uh, transmission case, or the transmission housing, sorry, the overdrive housing. To the standard transmission housing, right? So I mean, it's for you to understand once again. This side here, this here, this is a manual transmission. See, there are the shifters. See, manual transmission. From here to there, it's the overdrive, and this would be engaged by solenoids and that are over there, right? If you are going to do this, one thing that's really helpful. It's just a spray can or a spray gun. I just got this from the dollar store. Right, and you put some diesel and oil inside. Now I do put some oil because if you just put diesel, or especially gasoline, it'll damage the uh, the little rubber seals and it'll just, you know, ruin the, uh, the spray can. I mean, maybe if you have a proper, you know, oil can, that won't happen, but in my case, I just have this little you know, cleaning thing here, little cleaning can. It will ruin the uh, the uh, seals and ruin it won't work anymore if you just put diesel in. But I find that if you mix it with oil, it doesn't have to be a lot. It just stops that from happening at least for for some some time. You know, maybe a week or two. That thing only cost didn't cost much. But the solenoids are really expensive. You have to buy them new or remanufactured. These appear to be in good condition. You know, no rust. Uh, no pitting, but I will examine them closer later on. Right, the gears all good. Just unbelievable, guys, how well these things were built. How heavy as well. Look at the thickness of that. That's like half inch thick, just right there. Okay, so now for the disassembly process once again. Uh, I removed. First thing you'll have to do is remove those uh, those. Uh, uh, solenoids or switches whatever they're called this one you see there's a place for a wrench I uh, just use an adjustable wrench it has to be relatively thin in order to fit but yeah it removes removes it came out quite easily if yours doesn't you know you never force these things too much you know you just want to work it work its way you know against the rust and the dirt Little by little, you got to be patient if it doesn't come out easily. Unless you got a new one. I mean, if you don't want to damage it, right? So you won't. When you're trying to remove a bolt or anything like that with a thread, you won't force. You know, in only one direction. You just work your way around like this, back and forth, back and forth, and of course, uh, spraying, uh, spraying some diesel oil mixture like that. If this was WD-40, I'd be broke already. <laughs> Diesel works great, by the way. I mean, if you want to use expensive stuff, that's your call. But diesel, my experience, works great. I, knew, I mean, my great grandfather used to use it uh, back in his uh, garage, so it worked for years. It's still pretty good now. 
Okay, but okay. Once again, try to move on to the disassembly. Remove the uh, those things. You will have to remove this as well. This um, I'm not sure the name, but it goes on the uh, end here. That's where it would go. And like that. It would go onto this here. Like that. All right. Should go here. Now in my case, it did come out with just a regular pulley puller. And I sort of had to have some help because it's, it's got three jaws, and obviously only two of them will fit around here. It won't fit on this side here, right? But it came out, like I said, you know, came out like it was built yesterday. It came out really easily. You know, you might have to tap it with the rubber mallet, rubber hammer. If it doesn't come out that easily and like I said once again if it's stuck you know back and forth putting some oil putting some diesel whatever you're gonna put in there back and forth don't just try to take it out all at once you know in a single you know try just if it comes out a little bit and it's you know you're starting to put too much you know force into it hammer it back in and then back back out again you know patiently and it'll come out eventually most cases, the vast majority of cases. After you do that, you'll be able to remove the housing. Uh, but before, there's this like, it's like the third gear. This is how it would be. This is how the position of it. And on it, there was, there, it's, there's another lever, just like these ones here. So that's another way you can identify an overdrive, by the way. I have two of these shifters here, with these things, All right, like, starting like that, All right, and then there will be a third one here. I've already removed it. Now, in order to remove it, there's a little pin. There's the hole there for it. You see, there's the, you can probably see the little head there on this one, and that one there. Uh, I just used a uh, regular nail to, to uh, hammer it out I think it's this one's tapered tapered whatever so you know you might have to see which side it comes out from you might not be able to remove it from both sides it's probably one side uh, only one way in you know what I mean and so I just used a, a nail uh, the proper tool they call it say uh, Oh fuck, what's the name of the damn thing? Uh, punch, I think it's called a punch, literally punch. Uh, so it's just a hard, harder steel, but in my case, it just came out easily with the soft you know, uh, nail. I did use the set of uh, pliers to hold the nail. And obviously, you know, the shorter the nail, the better because if you have a really long nail it'll probably just bend it'll just bend once you hit it with the hammer but if it's short then it's it's stronger right I just used the set of vice grips to hold it I cut the nail in half and uh, put in there hammered it out and then once you do that we'll be able to to pull the, uh, the lever out partially it won't come out all the way and you'll see this part it goes into this uh, shifter arm, I believe that's what it's called, right here. This will shift this here back and forth, engage and disengage the overdrive, right? But uh, so this will come out, you know, maybe one inch or so. It won't come out completely. It will just sort of come out partially so that you can remove the housing. So now in order to do that, in my case, I did have to be a little more patient with it because there's a lot of rust and junk see there's a rounded part here so it fits in there pretty snug and with all the rust it did take me a while to, uh, to get it out but you know it was just a matter of you know you have to get kind of violent with this it, it, it'll take a beating now, obviously with the uh, rubber hammer rubber mallet don't use the steel uh, it'll crack it'll crack the cast iron Right. Possibly. Especially if you hit it really hard. 
there's a good chance that you'll crack it. So those are my gloves there. I like gardening gloves, but they're pretty sturdy, heavy duty. So yeah, you'll have to do that. And then once you, like, like I said, it's all the same with anything of the sort. You'll have to, you know, pull it, push it back in, and then push it back out again. And I, I like to hit it right here. Cause that will t sort of twist it. Obviously, with the bolts removed, right? Uh, it'll twist it around, not too much. So back and forth, you know, twisting and then hitting it that way, up and down, sideways, you know, just hitting it millions of times. Then once it starts opening, I'll use I, I use the pry bar like this here, right? And then you'll do one side and then the other side. If you just if you try to just do one side, it'll just you know warp it that way. So as you push one side out, the other side will go back in. If you understand what I mean. So you, I mean if you have a helper, that's that certainly helps. You can have one pry bar on this side and one pry bar on the other side. And both sides will come out but if, if not you know just one side and then the opposite side and then up and down you know opposite sides like that alternating um, and then it will come and obviously you know just drenching it with oil that's what I did and you can see there's no marks no scratches all right I mean if you have to you can put a chisel on it the beginning is really hard the first part it's really hard because you, you, you're not able to put the pry bar in, so you, I mean you can put a chisel and then just go easy on it because chis chisels break easily. But uh, actually, there you can see where I used the chisel there, right on the edge there. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit of a chance for now, but it's it's it just chamfered it that way, didn't chamfer it this way. Damage the gasket a little bit. That's not a problem. That's normal. Okay. That's normal procedure. That, right? Like I said, same with the chisel. You know, ideally, you'd have like four chisels and then one on each side. I mean, if once again, you're never hitting these things really hard when you're using metal to metal. Okay. If you're using the rubber mallet, you know, go go for it. I mean, just not really about the strength but it, you won't damage it no matter how hard you hit it but if you're using a chisel then yeah I mean you can break the chisel in there you can scratch it uh, probably break your chisel and nothing will happen to this but uh, yeah, I mean it's not fun so just slightly each side mine came out easy and you, as you saw it before you know if you watch the previous video the first video there was a lot a lot of you know, junk and rust and in there and it wasn't turning at all now the bearing now it turns freely I won't be able to tell now but it turns freely and without any play at all which is great and as expected so yeah let's get that out uh, the manual does tell you to um, Ideally, they, they wouldn't remove this part. They would leave this, the casing, the housing would come out by itself. And this big part here that I'm not sure the name of and I won't check now, would stay here, right? And what they tell you to do to, so in order for it to stay there was to hit the, uh, as you're removing the housing, just hit this back with the uh, rubber hammer, obviously. If you hit the thread with the, with the uh, uh, steel hammer, it'll damage the thread immediately. One 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 strike. That's all it takes to damage the thread. Oh fuck! No, that's a pain. Yeah. So, never hit a thread with a. Uh, if you hit it with wood, you know, like I said, you can you can have a big huge, you know, axe or whatever hitting the wood. In between here, you put a piece of block of wood, like this in between. It's got to be hardwood. This is oak. You can see the marks there. There. You put it in there, and you, I mean, you can hammer it as hard as you want. It won't damage the thread. The wood will not damage the thread, okay? So that's a little piece of it. But if you hit it with the hammer, like one of those hammers, steel, it'll fuck up the thread. So don't do that. Unless you want to, then I f I'll fix it for you and charge you. <laughs> okay. 
Well, the speedometer would go there, right? Um, but yeah, so now the reason you, you try not to remove this big this big gear here is in order so that the uh, ball, the uh, cylindrical bearings there they wouldn't fall off. But in my case, some of them already fall already fallen off. I, I don't care because I'm gonna have to clean them anyways so they're probably all gonna come off anyways. But if you've got a new transmission you know you don't want these things to come off uh, then yeah you try to leave that thing that big gear there uh, inside there right and just remove the housing. So just a little summary once again to summarize first thing you'll have to do to remove the housing is just remove this pin that holds the uh, overdrive lever, I'm going to call it, right there, just like the lever, just like the others there, it looks the same, there's a little, little nut outside, it's got that little slots, two slots on each side, so you'll remove the pin that holds it, and then you'll pull it out, okay, it, it'll come out about one inch or so, and if the pin's still there, it won't come out, then it'll, it'll, it'll it, it, it holds on to this thing here. See, there's a slot there. So if this thing doesn't come out, you won't be able to remove the housing because it's going to be attached to this here. It's going to be pulling on this. So by uh, pulling this the lever up, it disengages from this this uh, shift rail here. That's what it's called, shift rail. And then you can just remove the whole thing, and then that big gear there stays. Uh, apologies for the loud noise, by the way. So see, I got a little. Uh, <coughs> Uh, heater here it's a little chilly so that's why all the noise that's the reason for the noise but yeah uh, some of them are removed already I'll just remove one for you to see it's not a big deal you know, the, the little needle ones they're a fucking pain in the ass because they're tiny and you need a, a dummy shaft to put in there now it's a pain in the ass to put them back but these ones now I'll see if my one comes out look you see there just got one out there uh, there's another one just fell out. You just put them back. A little tough with these big gloves. Hang on, let me just remove them for a sec. See, there it is, back in its place. Not a big deal. And you can just put a little bit of grease, perhaps, to hold them in. Once they're clean, they might not cling on so easily. The ones on the bottom have all fallen off. But I mean, what you could do is just hold the transmission vertically. Uh, might work, might not. I don't know, maybe you could even put like a thin piece of some sort of special tape. No. I don't know if that exists, you know. I think a you know, thick little piece, a little dab of thick grease should hold it in place. I'll get to that part later and I'll let you guys know. But uh, I think right now what I'll do is, uh, for the last few minutes, I'm just going to finish removing the snap ring here, just for you guys to see. Not not going to film the whole thing because I don't think there's really, it's not really a point to it. Uh, but I'll just film some more so that you guys can see how, how easy it is to remove this. Just a, a testament to, to the workmanship and the quality. It's, it's just unbelievable, guys. This is, I mean, you guys seen the video how, how this looked before. Literally, there's you know pounds. There's pro at least you know two pounds of, of you know debris, junk, and rust inside there. I don't know where the rust comes from. Maybe just some surface rust. I, I don't know, but there's no pitting at all, which is what matters. You can start seeing, look at that gear there. Look at how nice it looks. See, no pitting. Even the uh, the synchro mesh gears, they're in excellent shape. I'm not sure. I, the only thing that sort of worries me are the solenoids. Those things are electrical and, you know, I know one of them is gone. Not these ones. These big ones look like they're in good shape. There's a tiny square one. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but yeah, that one's done for sure. And, uh, just have to look at it and maybe use another switch. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do, but I'll leave that for later. But uh, 
yeah okay I'll just uh there are proper tools for removing snap rings and um, in this case I think there's a slot at the bottom yeah you see there's I don't know if you'll be able to see there's a slot at the bottom where you can put a screwdriver in there flathead pry it out that will remove the uh, this here this is so much fun so uh, the video is gonna end automatically so um, I'll just uh, yeah, I'll just record myself working on it until the end of the video. Oh yeah, by the way, at the end, I will be painting this transmission. You're thinking, well, how am I going to paint the transmission with all this diesel on it? No, I could wait. The diesel will evaporate, but it will take a long time, especially if it's cold. So what, what I'd like to do is I'll throw gasoline on it. Gasoline will remove the diesel, and it will evaporate quick, quickly without any residue. By the way, this transmission here, it doesn't have any of those fucking little needle bearings. Just these big babies here. With cylinders and uh, big, you know, round um, skewers. I was going to say balls, but it <laughs> would sound weird. <laughs> at least I know somebody out there would have a hard time. Look at that. Here comes the snap ring out. Spring will fly off. Yeah, it's be careful. I wonder if they found it. Shit, if I had lost this, I would have cried and it would have been fucking really embarrassing. Little cylinder. Let's clean these little small parts. Here's the uh, other uh, solenoid for you to take a look. Bottom is just shot. Don't dump the uh, don't dump any diesel on the solenoids, by the way. It's not these things are you know, pretty much invincible, but I mean it's not really good. I like to use peanut butter cans with the uh, jars, peanut butter jars, whatever, with the lid. And uh, see through, so you can store to store uh, bolts and screws, whatever inside, not so as not to lose them. Well, as we show you yeah, here. Now, for the small parts, I like to put them in everything in a jar, another jar, pot, whatever. Dump some diesel in, and just whirl it around. That'll clean these parts really good. So I'm just going to dump these uh, little bearings here. It's pretty straightforward, so don't worry. Some, some of you out there might think, be thinking, oh, how the fuck is he going to put this back together? I don't take pictures. I just memorize it, but I mean, there's only one place each thing can go. And there are some pictures of the manual anyways. But it's really simple, guys. If, you, if this was a modern automatic transmission, holy fuck, man. Probably having to take pictures every two seconds and 
you know, thousands of different parts and they all fit, in, you know, they fit good in different places here, you know, 